Let's call the meeting to order. Call the roll, please. Mr. Cox. Here. Mr. Kella. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Rusinella. Here. Mr. Walden. Here. Mr. Strong. Here. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, this is the duly advertised meeting of the Joliet Plan Commission for the month of May. We've got an agenda is printed and we have no requests to take anything out of order. So with that being said, we'll move to the first case. We've got V515, which is a vacation of a seven and a half by 13 foot portion of a 15 foot wide east-west public utility and drainage easement located at 3320 Winterberry Drive. Uh, the, we've got the applicant is Enrique Aurarius. The, he's the property owner. The requested action is the vacation of a portion of a public utility and drainage easement. The purpose is to allow the construction of an above ground pool. Uh, that property is zoned R1A single family. The location is 3320 Winterberry Drive, which is the south side of Winterberry, Winterberry south of Forest View Drive. Size of the property or the portion to be vacated is 7.5 by 13 foot. It's a vacant grassed area. Surrounding land use and zoning is single family R1A to the north. Undeveloped institutional, with the, which is a Troy 30, 30C school district school zoned R1A, to the east is single family residential with an R1A, and to the west is undeveloped with an R1A. Under site history, the subject site is located in the Silverly Subdivision Unit 1, Phase 2, recorded in late 2003. The petitioner's residence is 40, 24, 2,478 square foot, two-story frame structure built in 07. Under special information, the petitioner is requesting the partial vacation of a 15 foot wide east west public utility and drainage easement located at the rear of the property. The subject site is a vacant grassed area at present. The rear yard is enclosed with a six foot high wood fence, approximately half of the proposed 18 foot diameter above ground pool will overlap into the easement. If the vacation request is approved, the remaining portion of the easement will continue to exist as grass area. Joliet Departments of Planning and Public Works have reviewed the request and object to the partial easement vacation. The easement vacation would conflict with a 12-inch city storm sewer which extends in the east-west direction within the utility easement. ComEd has not responded to the proposed vacation. As of the writing, NIGAS and AT&T uh, both have utilities in place and those locations would have to be exacted or deter determined. Uh, the Community Design Review Board minutes from May the 7th are available, and that concludes the staff report. And the only other thing I'd call your attention to is uh, we've got uh, <coughs> the staff recommendation, and we've got the public utility objections and the recent determination that a viable alternative exists. Staff's recommending that this vacation request be denied. That concludes Very good. the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? We think that they knew which way we were going to go, so. Any comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, a motion's in order for V-5-15. Move to deny. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Next item, please. Next up, we've got a preliminary plat, P315, the preliminary plat of the Center Bridge Summit Subdivision. Applicant is the Diocese of Joliet. Uh, they are the owners of the property. The request is to the, approve the three lot subdivision. The purpose is to cre create individual lots for existing buildings. This area is an R5 high density multifamily residential area. It's located at the southwest corner of Bridge and Summit Streets. The size of the property in total is 2.5 acres and it currently exists as an office and a residence. Surrounding land use and zoning is residential on all sides with a combination of R2, R3, R4, and R5. Under site history, we have no previous cases. Under special information, if approved, the subdivision will create three additional lots to the, for the three existing buildings owned by the Diocese of Joliet. A two-story, 3,774 square foot brick building is located on lot one. A two-story, 2,125 square foot limestone building is located on lot two. And a three-story, 4,525 square foot brick building is located on lot three. The buildings are being vacated as part of the diocese move to their new location in Crest Hill. And they would like the option of selling individual buildings to individual buyers. There are no known buyers of interest uh, right now at this time. 
public improvements will be required per the subdivision regulations and the requirements of the public works and utilities departments. All future development will need to comply with the requirements of the R5 zoning district or seek additional approvals. The community design review board minutes from May 7th are attached and that concludes our staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner for this item please? Good afternoon, my name is Joe Hammer with Rudiger Tonelli & Associates, 129 Capista Drive, Shorewood, Illinois. Um, I'm here representing uh, the uh, diocese for the subdivision. I believe that the staff report was accurate and make myself available for any questions. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the commission? Hearing none, any comments or questions from the audience? May, ma'am, you, you hit, come up to the, come to the microphone, identify your name and address. Thank you. I'm Mary Ann Barkas. I live at 420 North Center Street. I share the uh, south uh, property line with the John, Pope John the second house. And I'm concerned, I'm concerned over uh, the possibility of what might go in there. I'm concerned with the R5 zoning, which gives uh, the ability to have 10 units per <coughs> acre in a high density situation. I'm wondering if that would change because you're dividing the property up into smaller properties. If there's a, jo a zoning change, what would it be? And what control as a council do you have over it? Well, right now the current existing zoning is R5. That's what I'm saying. Right. Which is a very dense population. Right. That you could put five units on each lot per acre but it's got 2.5 acres, you're dividing it up in three places. Now, none of them would have an acre. And would, right. would that zoning remain? Well, it would remain R5 unless the, the new is, purchaser That is, that is correct. There's no, there's no re request or requirement now to change the zoning for any u proposed use. And as the staff report stated, they have no buyers for the property yet. But if somebody came in and bought one of the lots or all of the lots, they would be entitled right now at this point in time to do whatever um, requirement they would have in the R5 residential zoning district. However, one of the requirements we would ha that we do have in place is that any multifamily proposal would require a planned unit development. So they would have to come back to this board, this body, and go through an exhaustive process to get some future residential development approved by not only this group who makes a recommendation, but then the approval of the mayor and city council ultimately. And you would get notice as being a joining owner if something like that were to happen. Okay. My guess though would be that somebody would come in and buy those buildings in their existing condition. That would be the most cost effective thing to do. So you might get in the stone house for instance, you most likely will get a single family that will, will move into that house. With the office building and I guess what I call the, the rectory building, it's hard to say what might be proposed by a, a future buyer. We can't guess at any of that. All right, that is subjective though to the council, what they put in there. Pardon me? Is it subjective if they decide I wanna put in a housing unit or you know individual yes. rooms yes. to be rented out? Is that subject to the council? Yes. That I don't know. That, I mean, that, that I'm trying to think what would be allowable now that would not need to go to the mayor and the council or this body before them. And I can't think of anything right off the bat, but uh, most everything, we've, we've changed our rules over the years, so most everything anybody would propose would most likely have to go for some form of a public hearing and final council approval. Okay, well, that would be the objective objection to that neighborhood, that something could be moved in there that would like rent out individual <coughs> rooms, be a place for the homeless, whatever type of thing. That, most of those things, again, I think would have to come back for approval through, the, through this body in the council. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, any other comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, then a motion's in order for P-3-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Next item, please. 
Next item up is V615, a vacation of an 8 foot by 19 foot portion of a 20 foot public utility and drainage easement located at 922 New Fairfield Drive. The applicant in this case is Renee Bills, the owner of the property. The requested action is the vacation of a portion of a public utility and drainage easement, and the purpose is to allow the installation of a, a grow, above ground swimming pool. That property is also zoned uh, I1A, single family residential. Again, its location is 922 New Fairfield Drive. The easement to be vacated is eight foot by 19 foot. Uh, it currently is a residential property surrounded uh, by residential properties in all directions, all zoned R1A with the exception of to the east is unincorporated Will County. Under site history, we could not find no previous cases. Under special information, the petitioner desires to install an above ground pool in her backyard and at the time of the application was pursuing an 18 foot diameter pool. She is limited on the location of the pool due to the existing com ed line cutting through the north east corner of her lot that services her house. The city's public works and utilities believes that the existing public storm, water, storm sewer within the easement will prohibit the pool location in the area. Additionally, AT&T has also responded that they have lines within the easement in the area of the proposed pool. As of the writing of the staff report, further investigation of the storm sewer in the ATT line is going to be done. The uh, additional information will be provided as part of the staff recommendation. And then lastly, the Community Design Review Board uh, met on May the 7th and the minutes are attached. Now let me find the comments in the staff recommendation. And what we have here is the approval of the vacation request would allow the installation of an above ground pool due to the existing storm sewer and AT&T lines within the easement. The petitioner has amended the request to vacate only a four foot by 55 foot portion of the easement to accommodate an oval pool instead of the 18 foot round pool. Public Works is agreeable to the change, but as of the writing of the staff recommendation, approval from AT&T is still being sought. Therefore, the staff recommends that the plan commission recommend the city council approve the vacation of the four foot by 55 foot portion of the 20 foot public utility and drainage easement located at 922 New Fairfield Drive, subject to AT&T sign off before it proceeds to council in June. And that concludes our staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner for this item, please? Renee Bills, 922 New Fairfield Drive, Joliet, Illinois. Um, I don't, do you have questions for me? I know originally the pool the vacation we requested went over the top of the sewer. So we did narrow the pool down and lengthen it in order to steer clear of that. Okay, any comments or questions from the commission? Yeah, Jim, um, usually if AT&T doesn't uh, answer us in a you know, consistent time, does that usually mean that they're okay with it? Oh, uh, AT&T's been pretty good. I know Jim reached out to him yesterday or today, right? Today. Yeah, and, and asked for the expedited review from the, the guy that sent his comments in. But, but our okay then would be uh, holding to make sure that they don't have any objection. their approval as well. Okay. If they came back and said there's no way that we could, we could do this, then would pass that along to the mayor and city council and then they would have to be make the determination whether, whether to approve over the objection or not. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, then a con uh, motion is in order. Mm. A conditional approval of the changes subject to the AT&T. Right. Right. Make that motion. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Waldman. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Strawn. Aye. All right, I think now we've got a, a number of items that we need to do down the Lairway Crossing Business Park. Let's start with the first one. We've got three cases under this one uh, staff report. We've got Z4-15, which is an ordinance approving the reclassification of 5.5 acres located at the southeast corner of Emerald and Route 53 from a B3 general business to an I-1 light industrial zoning, and then P415, which is the approval, excuse me, an ordinance approving a preliminary plan of the Lairway Crossing Business Park, Unit 3, which is for both the northeast corner and the southeast corner of Emerald and 53. And then lastly, FP1-15, an ordinance approving the final plan of the Lairway Crossing Business Park, Unit 3, which is that same location. 
In this particular matter, the applicant is LBTM Holdings LLC, doing business as Cadence Premier Logistics LLC. The, the owner of the property is Lairway Park Expansion LLC. The requested action is the approval of the zoning classification, reclassification, excuse me, the preliminary and final plats of the subdivision. And the purpose is to allow the relocation of a trucking and logistics corporation to Joliet, construction of a truck maintenance facility, sales of truck and trailer parts, the creation of a large tractor trailer parking area, an above ground fueling station, convenience store with video gaming component, and a future warehouse building with an indoor, with some indoor recreation. The location is Z415 is the southeast corner of Emerald and 53. P415 is the northeast corner and the southeast corner, corner of Emerald and 53. And then FP1-15 is, is the same. Size of the area, zone B3 is, uh, so let me get this, 238,000 square foot, roughly 5.4 acres. And then the total size of the area under this plat is 54 acres. Oh, excuse me, and then there's uh, northeast corner of Emerald and 53 is 11.9, southeast corner of Emerald and 53 is 4.2 acres, the east side of Route 53 at Laraway, nor north of Laraway Road is 32.5 acres, and then the northeast corner of Laraway and Route 53 is 4.9 acres. In existing zoning, as said before, it was a combination of I-1 and B-3. The surrounding land use and zoning to the north is stormwater detention ponds, zoned I-1, NICOR and Commonwealth Edison right-of-way, and residential unincorporated Will County. Residential and undeveloped zoned R-1A is, is to the north as well. To the south is institutional with the Joliet Water Tower and the Joliet Fire Station number three. Commercial recreation with the Chicagoland Speedway. It's all zoned I-1 residential and undeveloped I-1, B-3, and unincorporated Will County. To the east is undeveloped and light industrial I-1 and residential unincorporated Will County. To the west is residential, commercial, and undeveloped unincorporated Will County and B-3 City. Under site history, concurrent with this preliminary and final plat and zoning reclassification request, the, zoning, the Joliet Zoning Board of Appeals reviewed a special use permit to allow the tr sales of tr tractor and trailer parts over the counter and e-commerce as well. The truck maintenance and repair facility <laughs> the sale of compressed natural gas and diesel fuel, the truck wash, and to allow the gaming machines, as well as a variation to allow the tractor and trailer parking not parallel to the long sides of a principal warehouse, a variation to allow the truck docks within 50 foot of the building corner, and a variation to allow the above ground fuel storage, and all of those were uh, uh, recommended for approval. Under special information, the petitioner is requesting the approval of a preliminary and final plat which will allow the development of multi-use 66,000 square foot truck maintenance and fuel sales convenience store and video gaming venue located at the northeast corner of Emerald Drive in Route 53. The convenience store will be approximately 5,000 square foot. A site plan and building elevation views are attached. The above ground compressed natural gas fueling station is planned just south of the maintenance building. The fueling service will include diesel fuel sales as well. An attached memo to the Joliet Land Use Committee dated March 24th includes the description of Cadence Premier Logistics Project. The Cadence development will include truck and trailer parking on the north and south sides of Emerald Drive. 365 stalls will be used for Cadence's current fleet of 270 trailers, which are a mix of temperature controlled units and dry vans. Another 80 trailers are on order and will become part of the truck load fleet. Indoor and outdoor stall locations are for staging, inbound and outbound loads for the warehousing operations. And that's the future 121,500 square foot warehouse that's proposed south of Emerald. Cadence plans to become a certified as a US customs bonded warehouse which will conform to transportation security administration and homeland security regulations and guidelines. A traffic study of the intersection of Route 53 and Emerald is underway. A traffic signal is recommended at that intersection. Updates on plans for signalization of the intersection will be provided as new information becomes available. Landscape plans are attached. Adequate stormwater detention is provided in the existing ponds. Emerald Drive is built and fully improved with utilities and streetlights as part of the required improvements in the previously approved units of the subdivision. The petitioner is requesting a zoning reclassification of the 5.5 acre portion of the site which currently has the B3 general business zoning. 
The 5.5 acre site is located just south of the southeast corner of Emerald and 53. The objective of the request is to develop the site more efficiently with the uniform I-1 light industrial zoning. Preliminary and final plats conform to the subdivision regulations as reviewed by the staff. Uh, Certain fees and variation requirements were waived on the IKEA 1 per provisions of the amended annexation agreement for Laraway Crossings Business Park approved in 2007. Remaining portions of the Laraway Crossings Business Park, including Cadence, are not included in those agreements. Therefore, sewer and water connection fees, economic development impact fees, and building permit fees apply to Cadence. The Community Design Review Board uh, reviewed this matter on May the 7th, and the minutes are attached. And then uh, we've got uh, mm. the staff recommendation is, is attached, and I believe that concludes our staff report for this Thank item. you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? Good evening. My name is Matt Kramer, and I'm with Jacob and Hefner <coughs> Associates, civil engineer on the project. Uh, Mr. Haller did a great job introducing the project, and we're available for questions. Any comments or questions from the commission? They had a question on the uh, maintenance garage. What's the hours? Is that, that going to run 24 hours like the rest of the site, or is that going to be limited? Because I notice it's, you know, up north next to the to the uh, road up there, and then you got the residential across from that. I'd have to uh, ask uh, Rocky Kalor. No. Rocky Kalor, president of uh, Cadence Premier Logistics. A uh, question for uh, the shop? No, it would not be. There would be uh, what we consider two shifts that would run to about 7 p.m. Okay. So 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. So it wouldn't disturb the neighbors in the evening then. No, sir. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, Very good. Any other comments or questions from the commission? The only thing I have to say about it is uh, Route 53 is such a mess at the present time, and adding more to it, it's it's bad. It's really a hazardous situation there, and with Laraway coming right that corner right there, and then just down a few blocks. Do you think traffic uh, control lights? will help any or enough that that's because uh, I go out that way quite a bit and, and I deal with the traffic and it's it's bad and I'm sure the people that are here agree with me in that aspect right a couple points on the uh, traffic on uh, route 53 um, first first of all the city um, Ryan Ikea and cadence has uh, begun talks with uh, IDOT in uh, to, to bring a signal to uh, Route 53 and Emerald. Mm -hmm. As part of that uh, process, um, we, we must all understand that IDOT will not allow a signal to be built until all the warrants are there. So we actually need to be generating traffic from our site to get that signal. Um, furthermore, I, uh, IDOT is requiring um, the, the Ryan IKEA Cadence team to expand their study on uh, uh, south of uh, Lairway, all the way north, close to uh, I-80, um, and uh, they, they'll analyze that whole corridor. And then furthermore, independent of what's going on in this park, IDOT has uh, started a uh, corridor-wide study that extends mu much farther north and much farther south um, for all along Route 53. And uh, the, the results of those uh, two, two uh, studies will result in uh, hopefully the necessary improvements needed and then also we must under, uh, you can't forget that uh, any business that goes into this park has a vested interest in uh, seeing Route 53 function at a, an operable level because if Route 53 is a parking lot, Cadence isn't moving goods, IKEA is not moving goods. So um, they have a vested interest in seeing uh, Route 53 improved a in a safe and efficient manner as well. Very understandable. <clears throat> just add one thing uh, we said earlier, is, and we're real proud of uh, Cage Premier Logistics. We just received a, an award from Great West Casualty Insurance through the American Trucking Association as the safest fleet in the state of Illinois for highway safety. Uh, so we're very conscientious uh, folks uh, 
we will be getting a good, good group of people coming down. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Do you have any perspective idea of what, what IDOT's going to be done with their surveys or whatever you need? Um, at a minimum, uh, we're expecting to see uh, signalization at uh, 53 and Emerald and uh, some geometric improvements, including uh, right and left turn lanes um, on, on both those respective roads. When? Um, as soon as possible. Um, th there's, we, we started the process with IDOT last week. Um, we've already got a traffic consultant un under contract, and they'll be conducting their surveys um, here probably in the, with the holiday. I don't know if they can conduct because uh, different traffic patterns during the, the holiday weekend, but they'll be uh, conducting their survey um, as, soon, as soon as humanly possible. Your plans in production there will be kind of waiting for what they come out with then? Exactly. Okay. Any comments or questions from the audience? Please come up to the microphone, state your name. Keith Baker, 1100 Eunice Avenue. I was concerned about the light pollution. It's great that uh, Cadence is coming in, it's a good company. But I was really concerned about the light pollution. Okay. Can you want to speak to that, please? S Scott, you want to talk about the city's requirements on photometrics? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And parking lots? Yeah. Yeah, Scott's the city of Joliet's engineer on the project. Engineering supervisor for city of Joliet, Scott Gapsvich. Uh, we do have photometric requirements in the city of Joliet. Uh, so every site plan that comes in, they have to submit a photometric study, uh, what the illumination is. Uh, we require it to be zero at the lot line, basically, uh, whether they have to shield the lights or whatever they have to do. But we, we see an actual uh, survey of the intensity of the lights. Obviously, the closer to the light, it's more intense, and as it spreads out, it, it decreases. But our, our goal is to have a, a, a zero intensity at the lot line, so it shouldn't be leaving the site. It'll be adequately, adequately lit so that there's not a potential adequately to... Adequately lit for safety, but yes, shielded at the, the property line so it's not extending off the site. Okay, very good. Thank you. Liz, if, if you Please could come up, to the come up and identify yourself for the record. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Liz Sodic. I live at 617 Sugar Creek Drive, Joliet, Illinois. I, I, I wanted to ask you about the lighting. Would it be similar to the old um, lighting at 53 and Rowell for the old speedway that went bankrupt? And now the lighting's a little dimmer, I noticed. But you know the lighting that I'm talking about there? Oh, straight down from the racetrack at the corner of Lira, at the corner of Laraway Road, fifty-two. No, fifty-two. Laraway and fifty-two. There is a large gas station. It's not in our jurisdiction. It's and not in Joliet. Oh, I was asking for just yeah. comparison in terms of lighting. Hmm. Down by the little couch here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that thing's lit up like it's. You can see it five miles away. <laughs> oh, okay, but as a professional and an expert, because I'm not, the lighting you were mentioning is it similar to that lighting, or I mean, just for comparison purposes. Yeah, I would have to go and take a look at it and see what's out there. Okay. Well, we just want to know what effect and what mitigation we are gonna ask for as a residential community that is abutting the IKEA Cadence Ryan Group properties. And one of the concerns is sound barriers. Another one is lights. Another one is landscaping. These are many of our questions. So her question regarding lighting, I'm sorry, I just wanted a comparison for those of us who drive there and say, oh, it's gonna be that lit up. Or no, it's gonna be lower. Would there be a time we could get a, an answer for that question, perhaps? When they submit their form, yeah. and then we'd be a, we'll be apprised of the meetings, etc. Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Do 
My name is Scott Glasgow. I live at, or, or I've got a home at uh, 198 West Laraway Road. I also own 25 acres at the corner of Laraway and 53. My concern is this, that uh, I've got water problems right now with drainage. And Chairman, I'd like to uh, give your committee uh, some of these pictures. Could I do Please that? do, yes. You may have to share them because you only have four. <laughs> you know. And up in, the, up in the corner, you'll see that, um, that uh, we've got picture one there. That's, that's looking south on 53. And uh, at the corner of Laraway and 53, that's looking south on 53. Mm -hmm. Number two is the manhole that's underwater that's marked sewer on that uh, picture. Number three is where the concrete uh, culvert goes under 53 paralleling Laraway Road. 3B is on the other side of that concrete uh, culvert going west on, 50, uh, on Laraway Road. Number four is a washout in my field that you can see where the water has run into out of the ditch on 53. Number five again is the east side going west on Laraway Road. You can see the algae growing in there so there's not much movement going on in there. Number six is that same concrete culvert on the west side of 53 looking east Number seven is where that water continues down through the ditch. Now, if you, if you pay any attention to picture number one, you can see how wide that ditch is. If you go back to seven, you can see how narrow that ditch is. When the racetrack was being built, the city took three 24-inch culverts and diverted the water that ran on the south side of Laraway and diverted them over on the north side of Laraway. So we're getting water down not only uh, from Chicago Street, but from the south side of Laraway. Um, and it, exit, it, it comes out of the racetrack by the water tower out there. All right, if we can go to picture number eight, you can see that the, the ditch has has uh, stopped running in that, in that picture number eight. Uh, what has caused this problem generally is that Laraway Road was expanded to three lanes. And when they expanded it to three lanes, they took eight feet of the north side and eight feet of the south side of the ditch. Well, the, the slope on the, on the ditch was so great that they couldn't get grass growing there. The only thing that would grow there for a year was weeds. And what happened was the water eroded and, and washed into the ditch. If you look at number nine, you can see that there's a gully there, but you can see that the ditch is much narrower on Laraway Road than it is on 53. Number 10, that's where uh, the water shifts from the north side of Laraway Road, goes through a culvert. If you look at number 11, there's a, you can see in the foreground, a, that is a three by five foot uh, culvert that goes under Laraway Road. All right, and beyond that is my, is my farm, and uh, you can see how wide that ditch is there. Now, the engineers that built Laraway Road up must have known how the volume of the water that's going through that, through that three by five culvert under Laraway Road. My, my, my situation is, is this, I'm not, opposed to any kind of progress because it helps everybody. It will help me because I have 25 acres right at the corner. The problem is that since Laraway Road has been widened to three lanes, 
I have not gotten a full crop out of that field because of flooding in that field. My field is a retention pond for Laraway Road. I have a, no, I got a, uh, <laughs> 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 I have a lighter, but I have a flash drive. Could we handle that or not? I don't know, Jim, can you try it? I don't mean to take up your time, but I, it's an important thing to me. Um, one of the things that scares me and should also scare not only this commission, but the city of Joliet itself is that um, right now it's zoned A1. I, when I went into the city, Mr. Hansen and I uh, got it to B3 if somebody buys that piece of property. If that property becomes more flooded, my fear is that the federal government will declare it a wetlands. If, the, if this ditch isn't cleaned out, plus you're gonna put, everybody can tell me and they can tell you the same thing, that the retention ponds work, okay? They work, all right? You're gonna have more water than, I'm gonna have more water than I know what to do with. Now I've only got about 50% of a crop out of there in the last four years because the ground in places is low and the ground in places is high. So my concern is that, is that if that gets declared a wetlands, the city of Joliet is out of a development. I don't know that for sure. I'm just bluffing my way through this, but, <laughs> but you know, mm. I'm afraid of that, all right? So if you, can't, if you can't get it, I have more uh, film that shows the flooding of this, of this area because of this ditch. Now they could have left it on the south side of Laraway and on the north side of Laraway, but what you're doing is this, this trucking uh, outfit, that's on a slope going south down 53 and it will come into that ditch that I showed you that has a limited volume of flow. All right. Um, yeah. Scott. Yeah. One second. What is the you know the contiguous oh. flow of the the watershed? So the northeast corner does have water retention. Where are their outflows and where do they go? The majority of that that area east of 53 north and south of Fairway is draining west to 53. Under 53 uh, on the north side through the, the culvert. I think this is a, a new issue. I think this issue this predates the yeah. all these developments, including the racetrack, had storm detention. Uh, storm detention basins have been in place since the beginning of the development. Uh, the road was widened. The, the road <laughs> ditches will be established. Uh, they're out there right now. Obviously, anytime you have an open ditch system like that and culvert pipes, a certain amount of maintenance requirements. Who's uh, responsible for the maintenance of the culverts? The county or the city or the uh, state? That's the city there. Okay. What about for the widening of like the ditches where they've closed up? The ditches were reestablished. The road, the road was widened uniformly on the north and south side and the ditches were just shifted further back and reestablished. So the ditches should be but I mean, like he said, it, they, they've grown. They've grown over, or or the water. The, no, the, what, one of the Billion things he, he can say that they were reestablished for the same volume. Uh, I've lived there when before Laraway Road was widened. We could take a three-inch rain, and there would be only, and I'm saying three inches worth of water in my field. Now, if we get a three-inch rain, I have to wait a week before I ever get into that piece of property. If the ditches were wider, would that alleviate part oh, of the problem? In, in some of the- The pitch of the ditch is wrong. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Thank you, my wife, my lovely wife, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, also, I was told, uh, looking at these pictures, I was told that the concrete culvert and the steel culvert that you've, you've seen in these pictures 
and I like the city's measurements, said that they were a foot and a half. The concrete one was, or I'm sorry, the steel one was a foot and a half lower than the concrete one. All right. Now, any plumber's first day on the job knows that water runs downhill. All right. I, Mr. Trisna, is that is that his name? Did send somebody out to clean the outlet on the concrete end. It did absolutely no good. So why is that water standing here? It should be gone, shouldn't it? Did you say water standing on the northwest corner or the southwest corner? I'm saying that it's standing here. Yeah. <clears throat> There's side of 53. I'm sorry, yeah, that's the west side of 53. This actually need to see. That would be the northwest corner of Laraway and 53. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Um, we can't get that to work, right? <clears throat> all right, all right, but it's the, sa it, it's the same thing. You're going to see the same thing where the water is actually run, running into my field and, and um, the ditch is only running about a third to a half full. My field is actually a retention pond for the water that's coming down there. Well, if the, <laughs> if the ditches are holding water now, making them wider would just allow them to hold more water there. Absolutely. The, the problem's further downstream. Something's not allowing it to drain. And it's because the, the dirt has washed into the, into the ditch and raised the bottom of the ditch up to the point where this water at the corner of 53 and Laraway will not go down there because <clears throat> there's a rise in the ditch. What the, the cure to this thing would be to take a grade all in there and scoop that out. And clean the ditch. Right. And clean that ditch out. That's, but Agreed. it's your, your decision. I <clears throat> wanted to make you aware of it, but I also want to make you aware of the fact that, you know, my greatest fear is again the feds coming out. All right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions from the audience, oh. ma'am? My name is Willie Blackwell Harvey. I live at 101 Pheasant Run Road. Um, most of the questions I have have been answered already, but there's some one thing <coughs> I want you to consider. The traffic for Cannon on now 53, the heavy truck traffic stays in the right lane. When you put a traffic light so Cannon can turn into Ember, that means trucks are going to be also in the left lane. And that, there's a, a liquor store on 53. And there's apartment buildings, Sweet. and there's homes, and there's children that go to these stores. And the trucks will not be able to see them at all because now they're going to be double. I would like for that to be considered in the changing of the lighting. Also, the uh, noise from the truck. I would like to know what type of buffer is going to be there. I have slept with earplugs in my head, pillows over my head, but I know this is only temporary. But the truck stop is going to be permanent. So, would there be anything to help buffer the sounds of the trucks? Could you come up? There is uh, currently a 100-foot wide uh, landscape buffer easement uh, on the north side along Pheasant Run Road. Um, per the provisions of that easement, we cannot touch that uh, 
that berm that's up there. Um, we uh, can install utilities, but we have to restore it to the current uh, condition. And then also, I, I'd like to point out that um, there's a, there's a hundred foot there's easement. A, yeah, there's a hundred. And there's a berm within that easement. Yes. But you can't plant trees or do any type of. There, there's already well established right. okay. trees out there. <laughs> Um, but what I meant by uh, we, we can't touch it is we, we can't put any parking, we can't put any buildings within that 100-foot that easement. Um, and then furthermore, uh, it, it sounds like the resident's complaint is, uh, was, was a little bit rooted in the fact that it's, per, it's a perceived uh, truck stop. And that, that's not exactly the case. We, we heard the, uh, the president CEO, Rocky, um, mentioned that the operating hours are only 6 to 7. And um, it, it, it's not a truck stop like you would see off of an interstate um, where, where everybody off the interstate comes. They're going to be uh, looking for uh, subscription users uh, to, to come in, uh, not, not just everybody driving by stopping in like a typical gas station. So um, I think th those two facts will help alleviate the residents' concern about noise um, in that area. And then I think we adequately addressed the uh, traffic concerns uh, and, and what we have done to date with IDOT um, in the last month or so and getting that ball rolling. Can I make a request on something? May I, could, I thought the hours of operation for the maintenance facility was 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Correct. What is the operation of the retail outlet? The retail outlet has different hours of operation. If we could just let the record show that she asked if the hours of operation were going to be similar as to previous stated and that the trucking company confirmed it. Do we have any other comments or questions? Chris Cartwright, I live at 760 Sugar Creek Drive in Joliet Township. Mm -hmm. I do not live in the city of Joliet. <clears throat> my, my concern is the property that's just to the north of on Rowell Avenue at Sugar Creek Drive is a vacant farm area. That whole subdivision is on well and septic. Mm -hmm. We are going to be subject to this whole property expansion to pollution, um, environmental noise, lights as people have suggested um it worries me that my property values have been devalued this whole area since chicago and speedway came in the traffic has increased since everything else has come in the traffic has increased global four traffic is a nightmare i can't even use 53. chicago street you cannot use it i mean if you want to if you want to basically jeopardize your life and livelihood Lairway school I don't know if any of you guys have gone out there and sat out in the parking lot and watched those trucks go by. They drive by at 40 miles an hour. As soon as that yellow light goes out, they're flying. You can't hardly get in and out of that school. That whole area is, is chaos. And I think that we really need to rethink this whole, this whole segment because there's children that live there. There's children that live in the subdivisions. There's, there's a lot of things other than the almighty dollar. I understand that these guys want to come in. They want to put in a put in a, a facility with natural gas. They say that they're going to run hours from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, maybe it's 8 p.m. Well, maybe it's 10 p.m. Pretty soon, it's 24 hours a day. I can hear trucks on Lairway Road from my house, and I live from my house to Lairway Road is almost two miles if you drive Rowell Avenue to the corner of 53. Two miles. 9 o'clock at night, I can hear semis banging. I can hear beeps from trucks backing up. The noise pollution is not going to be alleviated by some trees, a berm. It's not going to be alleviated. It's going to take a quiet zone. They're going to have to shut down operation, but they're not going to want to. And I understand they're a business. I work for a big business, big corporation. They're about making money. They can't hire people if they don't make money. And we all want jobs. There's a lot of people in that area that could use jobs. 
You know, so this isn't, I don't like big business. I don't want this. I don't want my water polluted. I don't want my children's school buses to have to dodge semis on, on Chicago Street. That Chicago Street is terrible. I don't know if any of you drove that Chicago Street. They just redid it like two or three years ago. Within six months, it was, it was like a washboard. They, they, I think Lairway Road was also, um, they gave them special, special dispensation to raise the, the tonnage on truck, trucks that run up and down Lairway Road. What was it, to, from 80,000 to 100,000? It's ridiculous. We need improvements. We need, we need lights. DOT, that's a joke. The Department of Transportation is a joke. When it comes to stoplights, that's a joke. Raleigh Avenue, from Tulareway, you can't hardly get off on, onto Laraway Road a lot of times. You can't turn out of Sugar Creek to get onto 53, onto, onto Route 66, 53, whatever you want to call it, Chicago Street. There's a lot of improvements that need to be made. Anybody been down there by the train trestle? Down there at Do Doris and 53? You're risking your life to go down under there. Those trucks fly. That whole area is a chaos. And I think they knew. Seven years ago when IKEA asked to have this done and said we're going to have this many trucks and Global 4 was coming in and uh, Dollar Tree and all those guys coming in, none of this was addressed. This should have all been addressed years ago, 10 years ago. But now we, as citizens that live in that area, pay taxes. Well, we have, to, we have to live with it. You guys might live here or there, whatever. You're worried about some car lot with some flowers in front because, well, I drive by it. Well, not you guys, but the city council. <laughs> what is this? I mean, this is insane. And I suggest that we really think about what we do with this property. Because really, the way it looks, a lot of these people that live in Sugar Creek that have been there for 50 years, the homes have been there 50 years, the houses might, be, might as well be, might as well buy the whole neighborhood, buy us out, and then do whatever the heck you want with it, because it's not going to be worth living there. My house, my house has lost hundred thousand dollars of value in since two thousand and nine, and you could look that up, and it's going down every day. So we put this in now. Chicago Light Speedway wants to have a race. Sixty six wants to have a race now. You got how many people coming in? I'm sure you guys know the logistics on 66 and Chicago and Speedway, all the people that are coming in for the race. Now they're dodging truck traffic, more and more truck traffic. Yeah, fuel station would be nice. Place to eat would be nice. You guys go out there, that's a food desert. It's a food desert. You have one grocery store out that area. There's no place to eat. You want to go have a hot dog? You can have a hot dog. Want to have a sit down family dinner? No place to eat. I don't even, I don't even use City of Joliet hardly anymore. I go to New Lenox. Blackport, because I can go the other way and avoid the traffic. But that's getting just as bad out that way, too. So we need to rethink this whole thing. So when we talk about let's rezone, it's good for business, business is good. Change is sometimes good. But we need to think five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, because that's only going to get worse. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no other comments, a motion is in order for Z-4-15, P-4-15, and final plat FP-1-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Next item, please. Next item is P515, an ordinance approving a preliminary plan of Laraway Crossings Business Park Unit 4, the north side of Emerald, east of Route 53. Uh, the applicant is Laraway Park Expansion LLC. They are the owners of the property. The requested action is the approval of a preliminary plan of a subdivision. The purpose is to allow the fu uh, future warehouse development and existing stormwater detention in five ponds. Location is the north side of Emerald, east of Route 53. The total area is 82 acres. The future industrial lot is 49.3. The detention area is 32.9 acres. Currently is I-1 light industrial zoning. Surrounding land use and zoning to the north is the um, Northern Illinois Gas and the Commonwealth Edison High Tension Right-of-Way, as well as residential unincorporated Will County and some uh, residential and undeveloped R1A city. 
To the south is the uh, Joliet Water Tower, the Joliet Fire Station, and the Chicagoland Speedway. That's I-1 and B-3 and some unincorporated Will County zoning as well. To the east is undeveloped and light industrial with an I-1 and a residential unincorporated Will County. To the west is residential, commercial, and undeveloped, which is all in Will County. Under site history, the revised preliminary and final plat of Lower Way Crossings Business Park Unit 21 was approved by the Joliet City Council in July of 2013, along with the recording plat of Lower Way Crossing Business Park Unit 21. Special information, the preliminary plat of Unit 4 will allow for future warehouse development and continuation of five stormwater detention ponds, a traffic study at the intersection of Illinois 53 and Emerald is underway. A traffic signal is recommended at that intersection. Updates on the plans for the signalization of the intersection will be provided as new information becomes available. Adequate stormwater detention is provided in the existing detention ponds. Emerald Drive is built and fully improved with utilities, street lights as part of the required improvements previously approved units of the subdivision. The preliminary plan conforms to the subdivision regulations as reviewed by planning and public works. Certain fees and variation requirements were waived on the IKEA 1 per the provisions of an amended annexation agreement for railway crossing business and park approved back in 2007. Remaining portions of the railway crossing business park are not included in those agreements. Therefore, sewer and water connection fees, economic development impact fees, and building permit fees will apply to Unit 4. Community Design Review Board reviewed this matter on May the 7th, and that in the mi minutes are available. And that concludes this staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? Matt Kramer, Jacob and Hefner Associates, civil engineer on the project. Do you have anything to add to staff's report? Well, again, uh, Mr. Haller did a great job, but I'm here for questions. Any comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, a motion's in order for P-5-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Next item up, we've got uh, one staff report that has three items uh, as part of it. The first one is V715, an ordinance approving a vacation of Emerald Drive east of Cashel Road, a series of landscape stormwater management and public utility easements at a Kia Distribution Center 2 in the Lairway Crossing Business Park, and a waiver of the requirement to provide compensatory, excuse me, compensation for the appraised value of the land to be vacated, and that's northeast corner and southeast corner, corner of Emerald and Cashel. Next up is P6. 15, that's the ordinance approving the preliminary plan of the IKEA distribution to center in uh, Laraway Crossing Business Park. And then FP2-15, the ordinance approving the final plan of the same. Applicant in this matter is IKEA Property Incorporated. The requested action is the approval of the roadway utility and landscape easement vacations and the preliminary and final plan of the subdivision. The purpose is to allow an industrial distribution center the location is the northeast corner of s and the southeast corner of Emerald and Cashel. Size of the property under the preliminary plat is plus or minus 345 acres in total. The final plat for this is 146 acres. And then we've got a breakout for IKEA 1 and 2. We've got lot 26, which is IKEA 1, that's 67.8 acres. IKEA 2 is lot 23, and that's 65.7 acres. The portion of Emerald Drive to be vac vacated uh, comes up to 1.13 acres, and then the detention pond is plus or minus 13 acres. That area's existing zoning is I-1 light industrial and the request to change some B-3 zoning to the I-1. We've got surrounding land uses and zonings. To the north is stormwater detention ponds with the I-1. NICOR Gas and Commonwealth Edison uh, right-of-ways are residential and unincorporated Will County. Also residential and undeveloped at R1A in the city of Joliet. To the south is the Water Tower Fire Station in the Chicagoland Speedway. That's I-1 zoning. There's also some unincorporated Will County zoning as well. To the east is undeveloped with the I-1 and residential and unincorporated Will County. To the west is residential, commercial, and undeveloped, and that also has some unincorporated Will County and some city B3. Under site history, concurrent with this preliminary plant request, Joliet Zoning Board of Appeals is reviewing a series of vi uh, variations for the subject site, a key one and two, 
Requested variations include a variation of the minimum width of trailer stalls from 12 down to 10 foot, a variation to increase the number of allowable trailers, trailer stalls from 278 to 528, a variation to allow the trailer parking and docks not parallel to the long side of the warehouse building, a variation to allow the trailer parking within 50 foot of the warehouse corner, a variation to the required landscaping from five foot down to one foot on the north side of the lot and from five foot to zero feet on the east side of the lot. In April 2015, the Joliet City Council approved the preliminary plan of a Kia One distribution center in the Laraway Crossing Business Park, the vacation of a 40 foot wide stormwater management easement located on a Kia distribution center and a recording plan of the Ikea Distribution Center Lairway Crossings Business Park Resubdivision RP3-15. Under special information, the petitioner is requesting the approval of a preliminary and final plat which will allow the development of a 1.4 million square foot Ikea Distribution Center on Lot 26 and a future development of a companion 1.4 million square foot Ikea Distribution Center, that's Ikea 2, on Lot 23. The IKEA, dis IKEA One Distribution Center will serve 10 existing or proposed IKEA locations in the Midwest as well as customer fulfillment. The store locations which will be serviced out of IKEA One include Bolingbrook and Schaumburg in Illinois, Columbus, Ohio, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, and Merriam, Kansas. The warehouse will have employee parking south of the building served exclusively by an entrance off of Laraway Road. Truck traffic will be limited to the use of on Emerald Drive. A traffic study of the intersection of Illinois Route 53 and Emerald is underway. A traffic signal will be required at that intersection. No truck traffic will use Rowell. However, an emergency access gate will be located on Rowell Avenue. Adequate stormwater detention is provided in the existing detention ponds. The previous 100-year floodplain has been removed per a letter of map revision issued in January of 08. Emerald Drive is built and fully improved with utilities and streetlights as part of the required improvements in the previously approved units of this subdivision. The construction of a Kia 2 distribution center will require a permanent vacation of a portion of Emerald, and I think there's a plat that goes along with that. During the cr construction of a Kia Phase 2 and the Kia 1 traffic located in Emerald will re require rerouting with a north detour as preferred access route. As noted on the attached plats of vacation, the utility, drainage, and landscape easements located on the Kia 2 site will be permanently vacated to allow for the future warehouse development. Landscape easements are noted on the plat. The preliminary and final plats conform to the subdivision regulations reviewed by the Planning and Public Works. Certain fees and variation requirements are waived on a Kia 1 per the provisions of an amended annexation agreement for the Laraway Crossings Business Park which were approved in 07. A Kia 2 is not bound by those agreements, therefore sewer and water connection fees, economic development impact fees, and building permit fees do apply to a Kia 2. And <laughs> we've got, uh, I'll refrain from reading surrounding land uses and zonings, we've done that before. Concurrent with the preliminary plant request, Joliet Zoning Board of Appeals reviewed, I've read all of this, didn't I? Yep. I think we're done. Nope, one more. There we go. Too much. Uh, the Community Design Review Board minutes from uh, May the 7th are available. Uh, and then uh, there was a neighborhood meeting that was held with the, all, many of these people that are here today, some of which have spoken. That was conducted on May the 6th, 2015. The attorney and the staff of the IKEA uh, developments were here. They are here now. They were there at that meeting. They answered many of the questions that those folks had. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? <clears throat> Chairman Strong, members of the commission, I'm George Mahoney. I am an attorney in Joliet at uh, 822 Infantry Drive, and I represent IKEA. Um, several things that I'd like you to be aware of. One of the things we're asking you to do is to vacate a stormwater management area. But by doing that, we're replacing those stormwater facilities with additional stormwater facilities. So we're going to be fully compliant with the ordinances of the City of Joliet for the stormwater management of the site. The second thing that I'd like to mention to you is, is that we were before the Zoning Board of Appeals this afternoon, and they unanimously approved the variances that were requested in our application to that body. 
Uh, we ask you to concur with your staff report. Your staff recommends that this be approved. We ask that you concur and that you recommend the approval of these vacations, the waiver of the fees, and the approval of the preliminary and final plats to the uh, Mayor and City Council of Joliet. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the Commission? Hearing none, any further comments or questions from the audience? Oh, yes, Mr. Glasgow. Yeah, uh, 198 West mm -hmm. Laraway. Um, I was on the Laraway School Board and we were approached by um, uh, a, a business that uh, requested that we give them a tax abatement. Now, I don't know if, if this is the committee that, that deals with that or can even answer that question. Has any of these uh, people that want to locate in our area asked for a tax abatement? We, we are not the committee that approves tax abatements. Yeah, usually that's, that's directly requested by the, by the, to the mayor and city council. And at this point in time, I don't know of any that has requested any kind of a okay, thank you. package. Thank you. And thank you for your pictures. No, I'm, I'm, I'm they're, serious. They're, they're not uh, Christmas pictures. No, no, it's, it's, it's very important. <laughs> And, yeah, come on up, Liz. Thank you very much, Jim. But Scott, I would, I would like the city to look into why that water is standing there. Because it's, it's just going to cause more problems for this development and the IKEA property and the trucking property. And, and even for 53, if that water doesn't continue on its path. So. Well, open ditches have to be maintained. We have yes, we, we understand that, yes. But, excuse me. No, like please, pro, please answer here. Um, it benefits all of us. Everyone. The city. Absolutely. So that's why I came here. Are you sure I appreciate you want to talk to the Nature Conservancy no. about No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so Liz, your questions. I have a couple. Thank you, Chairman Strong. Mm -hmm. All right, first, uh, if you vacate the five, if you, the city, the five foot on the northwest corner of the lot, five to zero, on the north side of the lot, isn't that the lot near me? Where will there be room for any sound barriers? If you vacate that, if, they, if you allow them to vacate the five feet on the north side of the lot. For land, the landscape? Anything, a sound wall, landscape. And Jim, or Barbara So you guys have going, taken away any mitigation. Five, five foot down to one, correct? And then relocate all of those plants other, other places on Onto the side. one foot? Yes. Wait, and I'd like to know who is the person recommending lilies for that car lot? <laughs> That's Day not, lilies? not a master gardener for sure. <laughs> but in any case, there's one, you're only talking about one foot? Yes. Well, because the storm ponds are right wall, there. The how's it going to be? How Scott, it's, it's the slope of the storm ponds, right? So that's the problem that we have is that uh, there's not an appropriate place to do that because of the existence of the, the pre existence okay, of the storm ponds. Is it ComEd Highline Wire? Scott, could you come up to the microphone so everyone could hear you? Sorry. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, I so it's not that this property is directly this abutting the subdivision. This property is not adjacent to Sugar Creek no. subdivision. You've got the storm detention basins, then you've got the ComEd easement, and then you've got the uh, property that the Lairway School, I believe, has potential. purchased or potential site. So if, if you look on the aerial here. Okay. Oh, so it's, it's not as if we're right next to a home or, or a piece of property. No. There's, no. there's some, some distance. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Next it's question. Really, that's not even the point, gentlemen. It's mm -hmm. not like the racetrack is further away and it has impacted our area. In that's terms true. of noise, light, et cetera, when the track mm -hmm. is operating, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be contiguous to have any effect. We're talking about two 12-story buildings flanked by two on either side, so we're talking about four, four-story buildings. We're talking about two buildings. We had one 800-pound gorilla in the room, now we have two. And that's fine. I, I, no one is opposed, I mean, we, we feel it would be futile and probably derelict in these bad financial times to expect you guys to turn down a property, especially with a prestigious and respected partner such as IKEA. We are asking for some mitigation is all we are looking for, is some way to somewhat protect our community. The difficulty is, is that we are not in the city of Joliet. 
So you owe us no accountability whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, however, good neighbors, I think the city of Joliet has always tried to be a good neighbor to us. And we, and Ikea has certainly extended their hand, Mr. Mahoney and Ikea have more than extended their hands. And we'd all like to have a partnership to make this work. I was pretty concerned about a couple things. Number one, we have, why do you need trailer parking? And I have to ask, Matt, is it? Matt, are you the DC guy? Are you the distribution? Yeah, yeah. I apologize. Please do. Because if we're talking about 50 trucks a day, why do you need so many parking places? I still, it doesn't make sense, and I work for a logistics system, so. I'm Gary Haller. I'm the project manager for uh, all these events in Joliet for IKEA. Um, the reason for the amount of parking is the way we work, if, if we're unloading, let's say it's 50 containers in a day, they're not live loads. Typically about 95 or more percent of our volume is drop and hook. So it's brought from the local, typically it's a port, but for Chicago it's coming from a rail yard. Uh, so a driver brings it in from the port, drops it in a yard, takes it empty, and goes back to the yard. All the internal shunning is done by our local jockey drivers, or internal shunners, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, the way our volume is set up is we don't unload 25 trucks, flip them, and, and take them out for the day. Typically, an IKEA distribution center will hold about anywhere from two to three weeks of inbound stock in the yard. So for some of the volume we're looking at for this building, that could be as many as two to 300 containers at any given time. Plus the <laughs> empties that we generate when we unload. And we also have 12, 10, 12 stores we're gonna to ship to. That requires storage for potentially 20 to 40 <coughs> outbound trailers in a day, full, ready to go. And then another set of 20 to 40 or whatever the number could be for empties for the next day. So it's not a matter of number X says 50, so we'll have 50 spots. It's the way we manage the volume, and it's the inbound flow and the way we work, and it's brought from the port, and we work with the carriers on free time and things like that. So it's dictated by the, by our, by the volume, but it's also dictated by the way that we uh, operate in the distribution centers. And for a building this size and for this volume, 500 is it's pretty adequate. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Hey, Gary, I have another mm -hmm. question. Liz, could you come to the microphone, please? Certainly. Do you get shipments from UPS, other drivers? It's not just internal IKEA, correct? Mm -hmm. It's from many, many. But we're still talking only about 50 trucks a day coming in? About that. But yeah. the 50 a day that are coming in, they're coming in, they're dropping their container, they're dropping and they're the leaving container with and an they're empty. leaving with an right. empty. I got it. It's a continuous fill rate. Mm -hmm. But your UPS guys went how? What? We typically at key distribution centers today we don't ship UPS from the buildings. Now that could change in the future, and that's part of the reason we're looking at this area. Because well, that adds a ton more lighter right. trucks, mm -hmm. a ton more small trucks. Mm -hmm. It's just more activity is the yes. point. That's that's really kind of my Potentially, question. Yeah. Potentially, be, yeah. Well, with 2.4 million in distribution space. <laughs> Just efficiency with demand, you're going to have to, you know, keep it moving. Uh, what's the noise level for your internal machines? The Can you tell me, will that be internal, bleeding out to the surrounding neighborhoods? Typically, and from my experience in the warehouses, if, and, and for this building, it's probably going to be about, I would say, 2,800 square uh, length, linear feet, give or take. The footprint is 2,800 square it's foot. Somewhere, it's it's somewhere higher than that, right? Just, yeah. to, just to visualize it for people, we're talking about 12 stories in the middle, right? And it's that, that new automated feet. lifting, yeah. that racking system mm -hmm. I saw. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's all that new automated racking. But those little trucks come in and wheel around there, right? Those little- Inside the building? Inside the building. From the outside of the building, you, you, you don't hear any forklifts. Okay. And we only operate electric forklifts in the building and they make virtually no noise at all. Wow. So all of the work done inside the warehouse is done with electric. We don't allow propane in the buildings. Wonderful. So the electric forklifts, you rarely yeah. Thank you. That's very appreciated. Thank you for the okay. clarification. No problem. Any other comments or questions? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's like, well, um, in my understanding that for Ike and Cannon, the only entry is going to be from Ember off of 53. Mm -hmm. They said no access from Rowell. So Correct. No access from Rowell. No. Trucks will go off on Emerald Drive to 53. 
uh, in the IKEA development, the, the employees that work there with their personal vehicles will come in off of Laraway Road. Okay, I live in Sugar Creek Highlands. There's no exit, only entrance. Bessemer Run is in and out to 53 Bradford. In and out to 53, there's no throws through streets. And now you're talking about two extra <coughs> trucking companies. Well, two warehouses that they're not, I mean, they use trucks, but they're not in the trucking business. I have, and I can't see the cars, the trucks behind me, but going from Pheasant Run to Patterson Road, I have counted 53 trucks going south because I can't count behind me. Just the ones I'm facing going down, just in that small distance because they are side by side going down south on 53. Now these trucks are gonna be turning into ember. That's extra trucks besides the ones that's already going. I'm trying to figure out the people that live in Sugar Creek Highlands, how are we to get out? during the busy hours of the day, except for Saturday and Sundays. The rest of the week is horrible. It's really bad. And now you're gonna put a, a light there on Ember that's gonna block the traffic on 53 going north. Cannon said their tra trucks are only gonna be going north. They're not gonna be going south. So how do we get out? There's a liquor store across that the kids go to for snacks. That's the only one in the area. How are they gonna get over there? That light should alleviate the problems of not being able to get out, because it on will stop side. traffic. I understand that on one side. But what about the other side where there's double lanes? I don't even travel 80 anymore because I can't see around the truck, so the car's coming down 80. So I don't even use it anymore because I'm afraid of getting, pulling out, not being able to see around the trucks and a truck coming and hit me. So how are we gonna get out the neighborhood now? There's no back way where we could use Rao. There's no cross street where we could use any of the streets in uh, Preston Heights area. It's just like a little U-turn. You can't, we can't go through Sugar Creek. There's no street, no house. Jim, is IDOT taking uh, into consideration everything at that intersection? It's not gonna be just a three-way intersection or light. You mean for Emerald? Yes. Uh, at some point in time, there may be consideration to, uh, if the property to the west develops, that that would be a four-legged intersection. If the property developed, there's a doctor office over there that kind of lines up with Emerald and that could go farther west. Uh, you can't really see it on the aerial here that much, but uh, I mean, there's the possibility of doing that. And then there was a discussion earlier at the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting about uh, an alternative to get the, the Laraway School could, the existing school on Laraway Road could take a road northbound that then would head back eastbound to line up with that four, fourth leg of this intersection. So there's a lot of possibilities there, and there are a lot of people looking at it, but at this point in time, there's no demand to do that, to go farther west, but it is possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hi, I'm Eric Spurstad. I live in, at 740 Sugar Creek in Joliet, I mean in uh, Will County. Our backyard is right up against the farm. A um, couple things. I would ask that IKEA help us to figure out a sound barrier. I know you guys are going to pass this because I've sat here all day and no one denied anything. And so what I'm trying to do, like um, we've been saying, is trying to develop a relationship so that, for instance, even though you're, you've, again, putting a sound barrier uh, north of there, I'm not a sound engineer. But I live right there, and just like some people have said, we hear all the traffic. And so I think that what I'd like to do is to ask IKEA and ask the other company to figure out a way that we can put a sound barrier, mostly IKEA, 
I don't know what that is right now, but we need to have something like that because it's going to get worse. Um, that's, that's one thing. And the one person came up here and said, yes, I understand from IKEA that they are getting a tax abatement. Somebody asked that question last meeting. They're doing that. That's the cost of doing business. I understand that, but nobody seemed to have kn knew that. Um, and the other thing is just recently we talked, we said that IKEA, maybe they can answer this question, is that you potentially could put uh, wind turbines to help power your facilities or their own generators. And it, there's going to be there's going to be noise pollution no matter what. And so I haven't heard, I have not heard anything about that. So if somebody could uh, address that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And then I think the thing that came out of the last meeting is that I would all, and I, I know that uh, IKEA will do this, but uh, the CEO of the company that was here before, he said, let's meet the homeowners. He will meet with us. And I'm sure that somebody that has the clout from IKEA can talk with us so that we can figure all these things out. All I would ask is there's sort of a win-win a situation. Um, and then one last thing that I um, am concerned about in the whole Joliet area is it just seems like the quality of life is just getting worse. And I know that that's harsh, but I've lived here 15 years and I hear more and more people saying it's, they just are not, you know, um, the quality of life because of all these trucks. I was, I was 10 minutes behind the guy that got hit on the freeway that was killed on 80. 10 minutes. I have a kid. I have a wife. That's unacceptable. I know you guys can't, you know, but we need to, as a group, get together and say, I-80 and that road, we, got, we can't kill people. Truck drivers are here because we need to move this product. That's the name of the game. But what we don't want is them flying onto the freeway, barreling over I-80, slamming their brakes on, and then when the racetrack comes, we got the young kids thinking they're Mario Andretti, blaring by, not paying attention. People try, it's just insane. And I'm getting emotional about it because I don't want anybody else to die. And so I will, add, I will make sure that, you know, with the folks that are here, that we'll talk to the key people of these two companies, that we can come up with a solution that at least the sound barrier, at least something, because what I've seen so far is that everybody, it's just we, 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 we share our complaints and nothing happens. And so I'm fed up with it because I don't want somebody else to get killed. And I have a kid that's starting to drive and coming off of Rawl Avenue going on to Manhattan Road, that's not your concern. I mean, it is as a human being, but those are the issues that I want you all, especially in the city of Joliet, to understand, you know, and you've got a lot of things going on. So with that said, I want to ask um, somebody from um, IKEA to talk about, you know, the potential of exterior or extra wind or energy producing. producing. Thank you. George, can you set up any kind of a meeting or? You know, I'm, the um, IKEA Commissioner Moore uh, had the delight of meeting with the residents of Sugar Creek in the area. City of Joliet handled it. We met in this room. Jim Haller coordinated for us. And the, the theory I think that came out that doesn't help me with this is that we told the neighbors that we want to hear from them. And so Liz was kind of a point of contact with Karen. And so we invited that communication between Liz representing the neighbors and Karen. And so we're open to that. And, and we, we invite, as we told Liz then, 6th of May, that we'd like that communication. Mr. Firstad mentioned about wind turbines, and I, I, I can't answer that question simply because I've never heard of it before. So I've, I've never, 
the, 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 the I've, I've heard of that before. The CFO well, of IKEA well, announced it. Again, we don't do it. We don't. I think that the issue in the newspaper indicated yeah. that what IKEA was mm -hmm. doing was investing and in putting resources in alternative energy at a wind farm Jim. well south of here. So it has, it sold it. It has nothing to do with this facility. Yeah. I'm just wanting to make yeah. sure yeah. that if that's potentially going to happen, the citizens the area know about meaning if you Frank literally put Mr. Chair, could I introduce Frank Howder, who is, uh, uh, will be working on the, the design and construction of this facility. Yes, thank you. Good evening. We have no plans to have wind turbines of any kind on this property. It is true we own a wind farm in Hoopston, Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exactly where that is. I'm pretty south. I hear it's south. It's south. It's south and west. But no plans for uh, wind on this property. We will explore opportunities for PV, solar array on the rooftop, but certainly there's no issues uh, with regard to noise from that type of renewable technology. Any type of natural gas generators on site would be purely for emergency backup? Uh, generator, emergency power generators, yeah. yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank George, you very much. Did John. you wish to address anything else? Thanks again. And we, you know what? Can we make a, a statement that IKEA has been more than generous in yes. their offers to communicate with us? We really do appreciate it. I'm Jay Gregory. I live in Sugar Creek. Um, I've lived there my entire life, 63 years. And hell, Scotty and stuff is since I used to ride our horses in school. <laughs> Way. I mean, it, it was never him meant for this kind of volume of traffic. And Joliet's expanded, and they, they're you guys' good graces. You've annexed most of Chicago Street and all the way out to Lairway and farther on all the way to Elwood and I guess maybe all the way to Wilmington. I don't know how far you are going south now. But Chicago Street's never been a well-designed uh, or well-planned. Uh, there's roads that don't intersect. Opposite sides of the streets have two intersections within 50 feet of each other or 100 feet of each other. This poor lady, I don't know if you know where she lives, but to get into her place, you have to come down Chicago Street. If you're going north, you got to make a U-turn on Chicago Street and go south, jump two lanes of traffic and make a right turn. I mean, that's suicide. I, I don't know how you get there anymore. And she's right. She's got no way in. I, if you look, you got to make a U-turn right in front of where they're going to put their new uh, gas station. And it's a zoo. I mean, somebody should realign the streets. I mean, somebody needs to be proactive and come out and realign all these intersections because people, I, well, I saw a car get booted about 200 feet in the air one day trying to cross Chicago Street. Just got T-boning. Joliet must think, there's going to be a lot of wrecks there because they moved their uh, fire station right out there on Lairway Road, you know, because there's people getting killed on Lairway and 53 all the time. It's a short trip for the ambulance. Um, Lairway School, uh, Jim Haller mentioned it. If you extend to Elmwood Drive, about the distance you're going to take off Elmwood Drive and extend it to the west, you'd be right in the backyard of Lairway School. I mean, they can't get out of their school anymore. Lairway. Uh, it's terrible, and, and Ikea is going to haul from the inner mogul to all these new buildings, and I'm sure their truck's going to carry a full load from the inner mogul down Lairway Road to uh, Lairway, and I, I can't see him turning north on Chicago Street. I see him going over and turning north right into the, um, their project. I know they say they won't do that, but truck drivers go wherever the hell they want. Uh, somebody needs to be proactive from the city and, and plan and, and realign the streets. I mean, they got to they got to get together with the state. I know it sounds stupid, but nothing's ever been right out there. So uh, you're you're going to grant all these other trucks, and there's no way to get out of school now. Or if you if they move over to their new place on Raw, there's no way for them to get there except go down their way all the way to Raw, which is insanity. It means they have to come north on 53. Tell the airway road, then go over to Rao, then go south. Otherwise, they have to go through the city of Joliet the other way. I mean, uh, you, till you actually 
extend Emerald to Larway Drive and eliminate them going south out of their front entrance onto Chicago Street. I mean, you can't even drive down there. Scotty will tell you. You're worried about water. Hell, I'm worried about kids in a bus. You know, now they've got kids leaving Larway School, going across Larway Road and going down to the corner to buy candy at the store during recess. So, I mean, there's no sidewalks, there's no nothing. You've got kids walking across the street and they have no way to control them out there. There's no fence or anything. They can just go wherever they want. So, I, 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 it needs to be all looked at. I mean, all these new trucks and all this new traffic, it, it needs a major realignment all the way down to, to Route 80. I mean, it, it's terrible. I, I mean, you got to run the gauntlet. Everybody, call, everybody in Sugar Creek calls it a gauntlet. Nobody will go down 53. I mean, you've taken us completely off that road, but it's suicide for anybody else to go that way, especially our yeah. kids in a bus. Thank you. I'd like to just comment. I lived in Sugar Creek myself about 60 years ago, <laughs> and uh, there was a bad. It's always been a bad situation, and now is the time you people stick together like you're doing, and the city of Joliet realizes the situation. This body people us as planning and the zoning we realize there's a real problem there and we got to deal with it but working together we're going to accomplish a lot more it's going to the development will naturally give employment it builds a tax base but a lot has to be done to really make everybody happy and i understand it as well as anybody else and uh right when i first we first opened up i made a comment about 53 and I we know that and I dot knows that and uh, I think I think together we can get something done that's gonna be good for everybody you accomplish a lot more working together and like I know mr. Mahoney and that and the rest of you we meet work together and and the right thing will be accomplished very good thank you yes miss My name is Hazel Harris. I live at 207 Pheasant Ron Road, and we all share the same interest. And like, I don't remember your name, but it, it, it is almost suicide to come out onto Route 53. So is, is, is IDOT going to do anything in the near future? Has it been addressed to IDOT to do anything to widen? And actually, I don't see how you can do anything to wind 53 under the trestle, but it, has anything been in the works to do something about the traffic on Chicago Street? Because this is additional trucks going down Chicago Street. How is it going to handle that? Well, so, so in, the, in, in the planning already, we've talked that they're about putting a bridge across the canal and tie right in there go direct that alleviate Wait, a lots from, and lots. A bridge from where? where? I, I, <coughs> Hobo, yeah, there you go, Scott. That's been 20 years, I guess. Well, no, I mean, I, that's, I think that's a fairly newer concept, uh, a high-level bridge from I-80, yeah. where Hobo Road and I-80 meet, <coughs> uh, to come south over the river and come into the west end of the center point development. Or that better in Schweitzer Road area. Um, and then the intent for that would be to take traffic off of 53 from 80 and, and move it to that location. And that would potentially be privately funded toll bridge and to bring the trucks in. Do you think it could be way. a reality, Scott? I, we're just asking. I, I, I don't know. I, we have heard this through the years. That's through at years. a much, I mean, much higher political level. And it sounds like it'll be a wonderful idea. But as, as Matt Kramer, Jacob Hefner, did mention at the beginning of the meeting there is a, a regional Route 53 corridor study being conducted uh, by IDOT. Um, fortunately, sometimes they tend to be reactive instead of proactive. And it's, it's just like with the traffic signal, they want the actual counts to be there before they make an improvement. Because they don't want to make an improvement based on speculation and then nothing happens and then they've got this improvement that they then have to maintain that isn't required. Well, they're always going to wait until the traffic counts are there. Yeah, we tried to get our speed limit lowered in our subdivision, and we're told that since we hadn't had a fatality, 
Oh, everything, I mean, stop signs, speed limit yeah. modifications, all have warrants that have to be met, so. Right. Thank you, sir. That's enough of this. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. call for the vote? Yeah, Chris Curry. Yes, Chris. 760 Sugar Creek Drive in Jolie Township. Two questions that I have for IKEA. Um, you talked about you wanted to shrink the five foot barrier to a one foot barrier. Is that is that what I is that what I heard? On the back on the north side of the property, right by the retention pond. Is that correct? Okay. You've got 1.4 million square foot building, and you want to take four more feet. Why don't we back it up 10 feet, 20 feet? Why do you have to have 1.4 million? You're already going up. That's what I'm saying is, is you're backing right up to that sugar, it's right to the, the, the farm, which is 26 acres, it's owned by Lairway School, goes back right along hillside. That's your, that's your whole footprint, am I correct? If we're, where it runs hillside and comes down? It's, it's south of the ponds. Right, it's south of the ponds. Right. Those two sections right there, where Elmore Drive runs through, you're going to cut that off. Right. Exactly. And that's going to be your two warehouses. Now, you want to encroach four more feet. <coughs> Not only did, did we give you the entire, well, we didn't give it to you. You guys bought it, and the city of Joliet said you could put it there. But now you want five more feet. And I'm sure these guys are going to say, yeah, OK, go ahead. Yeah. Because nobody ever, nobody ever stands up and says, this is not right. I'm going to listen to every single thing that happens. Don't get me wrong. I shop at IKEA. My kitchen's IKEA. I got a $10,000 kitchen in my house. My house isn't worth what it was when I put it in, but I got IKEA furniture. My wife loves IKEA. She wants to go there all the time. You're not going to be selling out of that store. We can't drive over there and say, hey, I'd like to buy, a, I'd like to buy this chair or this bookcase or whatever. I'm going to have to drive to Bolingbrook 30 minutes away when it's in my backyard. That's a problem as well. But you're talking about you want to encroach the four extra feet because you need it for whatever reason. And then, if I'm not mistaken, you want to shrink this, the parking spaces down so you can add additional parking spaces from 200. I don't, I'm sorry, what was the number on the parking spaces originally? 270? That, that was the, yeah. That was that's the, the that's the original plan. Yeah. That and was it wants to basically double. Correct. That was the requirement. For the parking, right? That's, the, that's for additional parking. But when this happened in 2007, I was at a meeting, and, and I'm pretty confident that I remember that they said, 600 trucks a day. 600, I don't know if anybody else heard that, but 600 trucks a day. And now it's, well, it's only gonna be about 50 or 60, maybe 100. Well, pretty soon it's 600 trucks a day because Global Four is right down the street, Larry Road. Sure they're coming in. Do you know if they're coming in via Union Pacific? That's how you're gonna bring your product in off of Union Pacific or Global Four. Probably more BNSF. Okay, and that would be located at the BNSF yard? Elwood. Elwood. In Elwood. Yeah. Okay. But either way, we're talking about 53 into this area. I'm pretty confident that it's going to be more than 60 trucks a day. And they're going to put the extra space in there. You're going to have the, the, you're going to have the trucks. You're going to have trucks idling. I know IKEA is 24 hours a day, right? That, that distribution center is going to be 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be noise 24 hours a day. And unfortunately, I don't have it on my phone. But when I, when I sit at my house and, and Route 66 is running, it rattles my windows in my house when the top fuel dragsters go down the track. I can hear them. I know exactly when they're going to run because I can hear them as if they're in my backyard. Now, will that building buffer that? Eh, it probably will, because it's going to be as big as Chicago S Speedway. It's going to be as big as the, it's going to be one of the biggest places in Joliet. But we need to, we need to think outside the box. And I know you, I know I just keep rambling on, and it's like, but my quality of life is going to be gone, and I can't afford to move because my my property values have dipped so badly in that area because. There's so much construction, there's so much traffic. So unfortunately, I know you guys are gonna do what you're gonna do. The mines are probably already made up. City Council's already done what they're gonna do. And I'm not opposed to IKEA whatsoever. I just wanna see something that 
at least buffers us a little bit. No, no wind farms, <laughs> solar energy, sure, but no, some kind of buffer, something. You know, with the ponds, there's got to be something we can do. Honestly, there's got to be something. And unfortunately, I couldn't make the IKEA meeting because it <laughs> came up just too quick. So, but I thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Mr. Carter, you. How, how long have you lived at your residence? I've been there since 1999. Okay. So I've been there 16 years. Yeah. George, are the ponds part of the IKEA water retention or are they part of the bigger project? Uh, they're part of the development uh, retention system. And so what uh, IKEA is going to do, uh, Chairman Strong, is essentially put in two new ponds to replace the two that are being uh, requested to be vacated. Could we possibly look into some sort of screening or um, trees, bushes, some side of something on the other side of the pond? If this project's going to push closer to I, the pond, is there something I, I know that IKEA, side? you know, has, has taken landscaping that, because the, as you're aware, there was a, a, a landscape requirement between the buildings. So right. the landscaping that was going to go there has now been spread around the area. Sure. IKEA is looking at the issue of noise. We don't know if it's going to be a problem or not, but we're looking factually to determine, you know, whether or not it will be. But one of the things we will be is fully compliant with the city requirements, noise requirement, fully compliant with the state requirements, including under the state administrative code, which says specific parameters, and then obviously the federal requirements. Sure. Well, thank you. A motion's in order for V-7-15, P-6-15, and FP-2-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. Mr. Chairman, we have nothing under study session. Next up would be the approval of the minutes of the April meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Any nays? Hearing none, next would be the uh, adjournment. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. All in Second. favor signify by aye. 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 Thank you. We are concluded.